Hi everyone, it's Lisa here for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm just in the mood for some springy florals, so I decided to go with the spring peony stamp set. So I'm going to be doing some masking, Copic coloring, we're going to do sharing things that go right, and we're going to share things that go wrong. I'm going to start with a piece of Copic Express It blended cardstock in my Misty. I'm going to stamp using Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm using Copic markers. Now I'm just playing around with the placement of where I want everything. Once I decide I'm where I'm going to stamp stuff, I'll go ahead and mask off what needs to be masked off and then stamp it. Now I did create these masks before the video because I really didn't think you guys wanted to watch me stamp and fussy cut stuff. So I just used some masking paper, stamp the images and then fussy cut those out. Now that's my favorite part right there is the reveal. It's one of the things I love about masking. The fussy cutting, yeah, not so much, but the masking, yes. All right, so on to the Copic coloring. So I'm going to start with this R81 and really all I was doing was just wetting the paper. Then I'm going to come in with R85 and darken up some areas, R83 to start blending that out. And then I'm going to go back over it again with R81. Well, I leave the very tips of those petals white because that's going to be the lightest areas. And I don't like to lay any color down on them until the very end. I'm coming in with R59 and I'm going to come in with black 100. Now I work each petal at a time when I do this because as long as that ink stays wet, it's pretty easy to blend out. So I really never have any issues when I go that dark and try to blend things out because I work that one petal at a time. It gives you enough time to, you know, for the, the ink not to dry out. So I'm going to keep on doing this, laying down the light color than the darkest and then blending out going back over it making sure the tips of those petals are white and then once I do this flower I'm going to do the other two the exact same way now I'm going to come in after I get those colored and I'm going to use Y21 and a blender pen and I'm doing the tip to tip technique and all I'm doing is picking up that Y21 with my blender pen and then bouncing that color down in the lightest areas. So the white areas that I left, I'm actually bouncing that Y21 down. I'm not coloring it because I'm not leaving the tip of my pen down on the paper. Literally, I just bounce it down and pull it up, bounce it down and pull it up. And that's how I created that there. Now I come in also with this uh, R02 and lay that down between the pink and the yellow just to blend them a little bit more. I love the look of this. So I'm going to come in with a whole bunch of greens at this point. And um, don't worry, I'll have all the colors listed below for you. You can use whatever colors you prefer. So I'm going to use G20, G21, G23, G85. I'm just using a whole assortment of colors here. And I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm coming in with my lightest color to wet those leaves. Then I'm going to come in with the darker colors with the, which are G85. And then I'm going to blend those out some with my mid-tone color, which is probably G43. Um, and I'm just going to continue doing that. Now, once I have all of these done, I'm actually going to come in and add some of that Y21 to the tips of these leaves the same way I did with the petals. So I'm just going to do that tip to tip technique again and then just bounce that color up and down on the very ends. I love the way that it gives a nice contrast. It's not just one solid color. It's just, I just like the way that it looks. So for the smaller leaves there, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm coming in with green and just filling in a little bit of it and then a lighter green to blend it out some. I'm gonna come in with E33 on the tips of those and then I'm even gonna bring in some E27 uh, around the uh, stem area there to darken it up a little bit and then blend it out a little bit more with my darkest green. Now you saw me lay the the acetate over my image. So here's a tip. Sometimes when I do masking, I'm like, 
what is that right there? What is that supposed to be? So I'll take my acetate with the outlines of the stamps on it and I'll lay it over whatever I'm working on. And then it, I'm like, oh, okay, I see now it's a leaf. So that's what I was just doing there. Um, so for these little berries here, I came in with VO9, VO6, and then I did that same um, technique, tip, tip, tip technique with YR18, um, the blender pin to that YR18, and then I just bounced it on the very tips of those berries just to add some different color to it. So now I decided that I wanted to color in around all of this and I wanted it to have kind of a, I don't know, antique distress look, I guess you could say. So G43, G42, and G40 to color all of this in. Then I, once I lay down the G43 and the G42, I'll go back in with the G41 and really wash out those colors. I like the effect that it gives. It gives this really nice, um, kind of antique distress look to it. So I decided this wasn't enough. I was going to really push my luck with this. And what's the worst that can happen? I have to toss it in a trash can and start over. So I'm using that tip to tip technique again with the blender pen and B37. Now you're going to see me taking the blender pen over to the scrap paper because the B37 is kind of uh, dark if you just take it straight to the paper. So I take a little bit of it off of the tip of that blender pen before I actually start to lay it down because it's easier to go back and add the color if you want. It's harder to take it away. So I try to start out a little light and then go heavier if I want to. So you can see the look that we're getting here. I love the way this turned out. Um, and all I did was, you know, just said, you know what, I'm just going to try something different. And I just played around with it. And I think that's the best thing to do. Okay, so now that we have our image completely colored, I decided, I, first I wasn't going to do any die cutting, but then I decided I wanted to do some partial die cutting. Well, everything was going great until it wasn't. So here you can see I'm doing the partial die cutting. I'm using a smaller plate. It makes things easier. I'm laying down. Everything's going smooth right here. I'm doing great. Even the little berries come along. I do decide that between the leaves I just cut and those little berries. I'm going to have to do a little bit of cutting with my scissors. No big deal. Until we get around there to the last flower. And that's where everything just kind of went wrong. So what I wasn't paying close enough attention and I ended up cutting more of the flower than I wanted to. So I'm going to show you what to do when you've created your colored image and you don't want to throw it away because you spent an hour coloring it and then you end up die cutting it and messing it up. So we're going to show you how to get around that. So I'm just going to continue laying the die cuts down, running them through. Um, and really, it's my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I should have been paying closer attention and I wouldn't have had this problem. So you can see everything is great up to this point. And I'm going to go ahead and lay down this last die and do my thing and run it through the machine to realize that I cut it too far. So what I'm going to do is just run it back through and completely cut it out. And there's, it's too late to stop at this point. It is what it is. We're moving forward with it. So if you're die cutting, partial die cutting, and happen to mess up on something like this, don't throw it away. We're going to fix it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my card base ready so that I can attach my flowers to it. So I'm going to use the diamond pattern stencil here and some willow ink. And I'm just going to ink, ink blend this out. Now I'm going to start heavy in that bottom left corner. That's where my flower arrangement's going. And then I'm going to lighten it as I work out. So one thing that um, I know everybody probably knows this, but wherever you're going to be putting your image, I recommend that's where you start ink blending from. That way, as you're starting, sometimes you might end up with some heavy marks or, you know, stuff like that. If that happens, it'll be covered up with your image. 
So there's our ink blended card base, which is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And here's our partially die cut image. And we're just going to kind of play around with this and see exactly where I want to put it and how I'm going to arrange it. So now sometimes when I'm trying to figure out if I want to use mounting foam, I'll just stick something up underneath whatever it is I'm trying to debate on and make my mind up. So I'm going to put mounting foam on the back of this and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the card. Now the piece that we ended up die cutting completely out, we're actually going to glue that straight to the card base. So once I get this uh, on the card with the mounting foam, then I'll just add some adhesive to the back of that flower and then place it right down into the die cut. And by the time we add our sentiment to it, you really can't even tell it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add some sequins around the flower arrangement. And I'm just messing around with the placement here and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere them to the card. I'm using the Honeybee's uh, Sunlight Sequins or Confetti Mix. Sorry about that. One of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that part up and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment. We're going to use black cardstock and heat emboss white onto it. Now I'm going to use the Happy Birthday uh, sentiment stamp set from Honeybee and just stamp let's celebrate because on the inside of the card I end up doing some stenciling and I stamp that big happy birthday on the inside of the card so that I can do a handwritten message along with that. So here I have my misty, I have my black paper in there. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some anti-static powder and then stamp the image using uh, some white pigment ink and then go ahead and heat, set, heat emboss it with white embossing powder and then heat set it. Okay, so now that we have the sentiment ready, I'm going to go ahead and dump the sequins out on my desk because, well, that's just the kind of day I'm having. We're going to trim this sentiment down with the paper trimmer and I'm going to show you a little trick that I do. So I've went ahead and I cut it down some from top to bottom, but now I need to cut the ends of it off. So what I do is I'll place my sentiment in my paper trimmer and then when I get it where I want it, I bend it down just a little bit to see if that's exactly where I want to cut it. And if it is, I'll go ahead and cut it. If not, I'll make the adjustments I need to make and then try it again and then cut it. So I just give it a tiny little bend. I don't put a crease in it, just a little one so I can get a feel for where that blade's gonna hit. So that's just a tip. Okay, so now we have our sentiment. Let's celebrate. And we're gonna go ahead and put some mounting foam on the back of it and adhere it to the card. So this is something I rarely do is do the inside of a card because I usually, if I'm not giving the cards away, then I'm usually doing a handwritten mes message on the inside of it. So if I'm giving it away, I like to leave it blank so the person that is gonna be using it can put whatever they want on the inside. So I came in with a diamond pattern stencil and went ahead and used the same willow green ink to do a little bit of stenciling on the inside of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp this large happy birthday using VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I'm going to stamp that on the inside and then I can come in and add any kind of little message that I want to go with that. Um, so I think that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I really appreciate you joining me and I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of new content to the channel. For more information about the products used, head over to the Honeybee Stamps website and I hope you have an amazing day.